What's up guys, Dr. Gooden here with the hip joint and pelvic girdle. We'll be talking about bony landmarks, then joint movements, and then muscle actions over this video and the next two to follow. So let's learn about our bodies. Okay, so this comes from the Manual of Structural Kinesiology by R.T. Floyd, and it's presented by myself, Dr. Jacob Gooden. Okay, so some background about the hip joint. The hip joint is relatively stable. Unlike the shoulder joint, which we have talked about in previous videos, this hip joint is a ball and socket joint that due to both the bony architecture, as well as the ligaments, and the large supportive muscles is very stable. And it's a good thing that it's stable because it functions in weight bearing and locomotion. We have to bear all of our weight on our hips, sometimes on just one of them as we are in some sort of walking movement or running movement or single leg jumping movement. And it's important to have strong hips and a strong hip joint. Now, what are some of these specific bony landmarks that we should note. Well, first of all, the head of the femur connects to what's called the acetabulum of the pelvis. And here's the acetabulum. I'm outlining it in red. The acetabulum is analogous to the glenoid fossa of the shoulder joint, but in this case, it's much deeper and covers a lot more of the femoral head. And then we have what's called the pelvic girdle. And this is composed of a right and a left pelvic bone joined together by the sacrum. Okay, so the, here are, I'm just gonna outline one of the pelvic bones. Here's one on one side, and then the sacrum is here between them. And then of course there's one on the other side as well, which I won't highlight. And there are actually three bones that make up each of the pelvic bones, which would be the ilium, which is inferior, uh, sorry, superior, the ischium, which is infra posterior or posterior inferior, and the pubis, which is uh, antero inferior. And then finally, articulating with those is the femur, which is famous for being the largest bone in the body. Now, if you've ever heard somebody break their femur, very loud, and it's a, oh, this just gut wrenching sound. It's a loud snap sounds kind of like a gunshot because it's such a big, big bone and it's hard to break. And when it's broken, you know it took a lot of force to break that thing. Okay, so the sacrum is kind of like an extension of the spinal cord. You can see it looks like about five fused vertebrae and it extends inferiorly into the coccyx. Right there. Sacrum and the coccyx. Now here are those three areas we talked about, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. And we have the ilium up top. So that's this part. The ischium is posterior inferior. And the pubis is antero inferior, right there. So as we're considering the bony structure of the pelvic girdle and the hip, we need to know that the anterior pelvis is where the hip flexors originate. So we have the anterior iliac crest being, here's the iliac crest, being important for the TFL muscle right here. The sartorius coming off of the anterior superior iliac spine. And that would be right here on each side. And the rectus femoris coming off of the anterior inferior iliac spine. And that would be right here. On the lateral aspect of the pelvis, we have the origin for hip abductors. And that makes sense if a muscle's on the lateral aspect that it would abduct a limb laterally away from the midline. Gluteus medius and minimus are originating just below the iliac crest. So here's the, that iliac crest, and on the posterior aspect, they would originate below that. And then finally, medially, we have the origin for abductors, like 
Magnus and Longus and Brevis, also Pectinius, Gracilis. And these all come off of the pubis in its inferior ramus. So here's, here's the pubis, and here's the inferior ramus of the pubis. So that would be the origin for many of the hip adductors. Now posteriorly and posterior inferiorly, we have hip extensor muscles. Now we're looking at the hip from a posterior aspect. And we have the gluteus maximus arising from the posterior iliac crest and the posterior sacrum and coccyx right here and here. And posterior inferiorly, we have the hamstring muscle group arising off of the ischium in the ischial tuberosity. And these muscles are powerful hip extensors. Now we also have on the proximal thigh, the insertion for some short muscles of the hip, the gluteal muscles and the six deep external rotators are going to insert on the greater trochanter and the iliopsoas on the lesser trochanter. And then proximally on the thigh also we have the origin for the other three knee extensors besides rectus femoris, but the three vasti muscles, they arise on the anterior aspect of the femur. The patella is the insertion point for all four quadriceps muscles which gives way to the patellar tendon, of course. And then the proximal tibia is the insertion for the remainder of the hip muscles. So we have sartorius, gracilis, semitendinosus. These are on the upper anteromedial aspect of the tibial surface, so right around here, anteromedial. And the semimembranosus crosses posteromedially, so right here on that posterior and medial aspect. Now biceps femoris inserts laterally, primarily on the head of the fibula, but some fibers attaching to the lateral tibial condyle. So that's gonna be right here. See it on both sides. And the IT band tract, or the iliotibial tract of the tensor fascia latae is going to be anterolaterally on Gerdes tubercle, right here. So that was a brief introduction to the bony landmarks of the hip joint and the pelvic girdle. Now, all of the landmarks we went over, you should be able to palpate on yourself or on a partner. And they're important for understanding the lines of pull of the musculature of the hip, which is fairly complex because of all of the different degrees of freedom that the hip has between the lumbar spine movements and then the hip joint movements. You can move your pelvic girdle in a lot of different ways, so super important to remember those lines of pull of all of the musculature. Thanks for watching. If you have questions about any of what I've said, let me know down in the comments below. Now, if you're interested in structural kinesiology or applied anatomy, or you just wanna learn more about how your body works, then head over to this playlist where all of my structural kinesiology videos are kept. If you wanna keep learning about the hip region, then there should be a video popping up right over here that will take you to the joint movements of the hip. So I'll see you on the next video. I'm Dr. Gooden, as always, thank you so much for watching.